Paraphilia is a topic that I already covered in my previous video in the series about sex education. And today's two topics, kink and fetish, are strongly connected to the previous one, so I do recommend you highly to first watch my video on paraphilia and then come back here and watch this video. That will help your understanding of what is kink, what is fetish, where is the difference and where is the difference to paraphilia. More about that in a moment. But obviously before we begin I have to tell you that this is your experience and here I share my various experiences about different topics. I currently upload one piece of content per week and if you enjoy this piece of content then please drop a like, subscribe to the channel, do whatever you can on the platform of your choice. Let's go! First I need to say that there is no one definition for kink and for fetish. There are a couple definitions and depending on what specialist in this world of sex you will ask, the definition can be a little bit but different. I will do my best to first cover more or less objective definitions and then jump to more or less subjective definitions and what it is considered to be in the society. And we start with king and king basically, if I do understand it correctly, pretty much same stuff as paraphilia. So kink is every kind of sexual attraction and behavior that is not considered traditional in our society. So no vaginal penetration, no interaction directly with like erogenous zones that people have on their body. And although kink and paraphilia is pretty much same stuff, people or society sees these two things in different ways and more about that in the end of the video, but basically King is paraphilia without an ability of having a disorder. If you watched my video on paraphilia, you know that there is paraphilia and there is paraphilic disorder, which are connected but obviously not the same. King is only this positive side of the story, only paraphilia, only this different kind of desires, but without possible implications on people personally, individually, and without implications on their life negatively and on the life of people around them as well as society. And coming from there, kinky lifestyle or kinky sexual life is when you have not vanilla lifestyle, not this typical traditional lifestyle, you have something else like BDSM or maybe some interesting other toys that you use for your sexual attraction, sexual desire. And in current times kink is something positive, it is something good, although you, we need not to forget that overall most of the countries, most of the societies have more traditional way of thinking about sexual life, but as far as non-traditional uh, sexual life goes, kinky lifestyle is considered to be something positive. Now let's go to fetish. And fetish and kink are a lot of occasions used interchangeably, although if you go into detail there are differences between these two. And we start with a non-sexual definition of a fetish, because both with kink and fetish there are sexual definitions and definitions that don't have anything to do with sex. And fetish in the spiritual way of thinking is some object that has, a, that has some spiritual power that protects you, that helps you, that supports you and you believe in that object having some power and you use that object for your own prosperity. And then when we go to sexual part of the definition we take the same concept, we have an object that has some value for you, some spiritual value for you, but we replace the word spiritual with sexual. So basically fetish is for people some object thanks to which they can fulfill their sexual desire or thanks to which they have get an erection, they even feel sexual desire only if this object is into place somewhere around them. But here we go one step further than spiritual definition. It is not only about objects, like some not living objects, but also body parts, or maybe absence of body parts, and more about that in a moment. Basically, fetishism, this idea of existing of fetish for some people, is part of kink part of paraphilia, because paraphilia is non-traditional sexual desires, attractions and whatnot, uh, or interactions, 
And fetish is one part of it, is one type of it. It is important to mention that in fetishism it is not important to whom this object belongs to, at least in most occasions. It is important the presence of the object itself. For example, there are people who like to take, touch, maybe mm, take a smell, take a nip, and other people underwear or socks. And there is a question to whom it belongs to. If it is important to whom it belongs to, then maybe you don't have uh, fetishism, but you have other kinds of sexual desire towards that specific person. If it is just important that it is used, but not important by whom, then probably it is fetishism. Also, if it is not important whether it was used or not, but it is important that it is like specifically white knee sock, then it's probably fetishism too. In scientific world, there is no one theory why fetishism exists. There is no like clear reasoning. When we do this, then we 100% actually will have fetish by that specific person who's done this. One of the explanations is more neurological, and it said that one of regions of the brain that is connected to our feelings towards uh, erogenous zones of other people is very close to our like way of thinking about feet, something like that. And since these two regions are so close to each other, there is possibility of them creating a connection and that's how food fetishism is created basically. So people associate food or feet with so the sexual erogenous zones, although for everybody else it is not the case, but for these people, because some connections in their brain, it is the case. Another theory says we learn a lot of that behavior. For example, uh, during our puberty time, a lot of people masturbate. It is like normal. It doesn't matter what sex. All people or most people masturbate. And for example, you masturbated only on a image to an image for a person with knee socks, red knee socks, only to that image because for whatever reason you didn't have any other images. And that can lead for, to you developing a fetish towards people in red knee socks. And then afterwards, every time you see red knee socks on people, without people, on mannequins, you are feeling, you feel a little bit but aroused and, or maybe a, a lot of arousal in you because your brain has this association that developed during your puberty time, red knee socks, sex, nice. One, another theory that is connected to this one and builds on it is that for people, for human beings and overall actually for animals, there is critical time of learning sexual behavior. And various information that we catch during this time is then used by, by our brain for sexualization of our world around us and what we input in human beings or in animals during this time is important and that creates fetish in our heads. There are a couple of more theories too and there is no one theory because at the end of the day in a lot of occasions fetish is harmless. Only a small fraction of people who have fetishism also develop fetishistic disorder, which is kind of a kind of paraphilic disorder, where the sexual arousal by some object or some body part influences your life and influences it negatively. For example, you can only get aroused when this object is around. If that object is not there, you don't get arousal like at all, or you are not satisfied with your sexual experience at all. And with this type of dissatisfaction, with this type of problem, you can go to a specialist and various specialists will try to help you with various methods. But normally it is not the case. Most of the people find partners who can understand the fetish of another per person and deal with it or live with it or have sexual life that considers it. A couple of fun facts or just facts about fetishism. There are more male fetishists than female fetishists, it is not really clear why, but it is the case. Normally, fetishism doesn't disappear in person if there is no interaction from other people. So if you go to a specialist, you can get rid of one of your fetishist ideas or like deal with it better or maybe try to remove it. But usually if you have some kind of fetish, this fetish will be in your life 
throughout your life. On the other hand, you can get new fetishes over time. You can add new fetishes to your in inventory of fetishes and become attracted to some specific objects if the life leads to that. And speaking of body parts, there are people who are attracted to people who don't have some specific body parts because of various reasons. Why is this attraction there? We don't know, but please, if you have this kind of attraction, communicate it with your partner. It is not a problem of all that people are attracted to missing limbs, for example, but please be clear, be Clear, be sure to communicate it properly to your partner so your partner doesn't feel used. Prior to now, I tried at least to talk about these topics more or less objectively. Now we go in this subjective field of view or more like how society sees it field of view and it is a little bit but different depending on who you ask. First, as I already mentioned, fetish and kink are almost used interchangeably as, of, as if it is same stuff. It is not completely the true as I already explained, but people in everyday life normally don't know the difference. But if they do know the difference, one of the main ideas that I found during my small research was bad, worse, worst idea. What do I mean? Kink is kind of sexual attraction, sexual arousal that you can have, but you don't need it in order to have sexual interaction, in order to get aroused. Fetish you need to have in your surroundings or somewhere around you in order to get aroused and paraphilia you have to have. You like you can't live without it and you can't deal with your life properly without this something, this kind of, this part of life in your life, especially in your sexual life. Based on my understanding, this way of thinking is a little bit old because the definition of paraphilia changed over time and currently I would strongly advise you to not use it as it is, as I mentioned right now, bad was the worst, especially including the fact that paraphilia in this context is only considered to be disorder, although paraphilia is not only disorder. There are paraphilic disorder, there is paraphilia. There is kink, which is pretty much the same stuff as paraphilia. There is fetish, that is part of kink and paraphilia. And there is fetishist disorder that does appear and which is a kind of paraphilic disorder. And why is it important to know the difference? A, it is not that important in my personal opinion, as long as you know what you do, but what is important is to not put blame on various people because they have something. Since paraphilia has this negative connotation, but kink doesn't, people try to use kink more than paraphilia. So if you have something, you say, I have kink, I am kinky, but but people don't say I have paraphilia. And then for example, when we are talking about pedophilia, pedophilia is normally a kink or paraphilia. It doesn't have to be a disorder because people don't have to like interact on their urges. They don't have act on their urges. But I'm sure nobody, nobody will say that pedophilia is kinky. People will say that pedophilia is a problem, that is a disorder maybe. But kinky? No. Similarly with fetish, people are saying that, or there the, are uh, specialists that are saying that fetish you almost have to have. So you cannot get, in, you cannot get aroused without fetish, but it is not actually the case. You can you can be aroused with this, without the presence of this object. You can have successful se uh, sexual life without this object. And then inside of your sexual life interaction with this object, there's a spectrum. Do you need it or do you don't need it? Do you have to have it or is it nice to have? Basically, this bad, worse, the worst definition that a lot of specialists use, I personally find misleading, especially towards various people who have one or another of the things. Which brings me to the question, why is it important? It is important to deal with people honestly. It is important to deal with people humane. And including the fact that sexual life is a complicated topic, so or so, it is better in my personal opinion to use proper definitions and don't just throw these words around as we do is 
uh, in a hell lot of other topics. That's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this piece of content. If it is the case, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also do whatever is possible on your platform. We will see each other next week on Monday if everything works great and I see you next week.